Hi, I'm Steve Chapman, Forester Coordinator for the National Bob White Conservation Initiative. Welcome to Sunlight, Fire, and Quail, where we will take a look at what is becoming increasingly serious option among landowners for managing their stands of southern yellow pine. Southern yellow pines include loblolly, slash, longleaf, and shortleaf, which are all native to the southern U.S. Of course, landowners have various reasons for owning their land and many options for managing it. Recent surveys indicate that most private landowners manage for recreation, wildlife, and pride of ownership. While timber production is important, it is often a lesser objective. One of the options we offer for your consideration is actively managing these stands to maximize wildlife by recreating the open savannas and grassy woodlands that were once so much a part of our landscape. And by wildlife, we mean not only deer and turkey and other game and non-game species, but also northern bobwhites whose populations have plummeted by 80% or more around its range because of habitat decline. An increasing number of public agencies are beginning to adopt this active management approach on public lands with great success. But most forested land in the Bob White's range is in private ownership, which is why your consideration and participation is crucial. In fact, our studies indicate that 60% or more of the opportunity to restore Bob White's along with all the other species that require the same habitat is connected to our forest. So how do you maximize wildlife, including Bob White's on your forested landscape? The answer is sunlight and fire. You must ensure that these two ingredients reach the ground in the right mix to maximize your wildlife habitat potential. And this approach will even work on mixed pine and hardwood stands, especially on low productivity sites. This approach is really nothing new. It's one that was abandoned over the decades in favor of total fire suppression in the landscape and a cultural reluctance to purposely manage the forest. Native Americans saw the positive results on wildlife populations of natural fire and disruptions that thin forest and they replicated it successfully to boost those populations as did early European settlers and landowners on into the first half of the 20th century. Today, most forest stands have a closed canopy with little or no sunlight reaching the ground. Thus, there is no vigorous and diverse herbaceous understory to provide premium wildlife habitat. Quail and many other species require a mix of warm season native grasses for nesting, forbs such as wildflowers and weeds for seed and insect production, along with scattered clumps of woody shrubs for protection from weather and predators. Without abundant sunlight reaching the ground, none of these habitat components can develop. Sunlight on the forest floor is achieved through commercial timber harvest and thinning, which also provide income to landowners that can be used for other land management expenses prior to final harvest. Achieving enough sunlight for these purposes typically requires a heavier thinning than those used solely for timber production purposes. One rule of thumb is that when you walk through your stand, you should have sunlight on your head and feet half the time. Subsequent and frequent applications of prescribed fire, generally every two to four years, depending on the situation, are necessary to clear the dust of the forest floor, bear some of the soil, increase soil surface temperature, release nutrients, and allow the native grasses and forbs already in the seed bank to germinate. In areas where prescribed fire may not be an option, some of its benefits may be achieved with mechanical and herbicide treatments. Best results will require repeated applications at fire at regular intervals. Quail habitat will not be maintained with only a couple of fires or fires at infrequent intervals. In addition, neither thinning alone nor fire alone will provide the desired understory development, composition, and structure, especially for bobwhites. In the pine area, of course, it's, it's going to stimulate uh, forbs and grasses underneath the pine canopy. We have thinned the forest, and uh, yes, quail eat, do eat some pine seed, but uh, most of their food is, of course, on the ground. If you have a closed canopy forest and no sunlight penetrating the forest, then there's no cover for, for hide, escape cover, and there's no food. 
So that's why it's important that we cut some of the trees and clear out those areas. Not only does it make it where the sunlight can stimulate the forbs on the ground, it also, if we remove some of the trees, these the trees that are left actually grow faster, straighter, and can be a better timber producer in the future. So that's a twofold thing is to actually clear some of the some of the trees out. And I guess the, the misnomer most people believe about wildlife, they think that fire is bad and cutting a tree is bad. That's completely false. The two most important tools that we have especially for the early successional animals as, as well as a lot of others, is we got to thin the forest and we got to reintroduce fire back to it. That's what we're trying to do. Finally, if you would like to investigate further opportunity, we urge you to contact a local wildlife biologist or a professional forester with experience in both wildlife habitat management and timber production. And for more information on Bob White Quail and the National Bob White Conservation Initiative, please visit our website at www.bringbackbobwhites.org.